Extinction envelops this planet. Can you feel its grip upon us? Meet Your Maker is a game I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. With a cool original idea and Doom-like gameplay, it's hard to see why this wouldn't be a home run for Behavior Interactive. Unfortunately, I don't know if it would be right to recommend the game right now. The reason I say this is because as much as I liked the game, the game you're playing 5 hours is exactly the same as the game you're playing 30 hours in. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing. If a game has a great core gameplay loop that is rewarding, then it's perfectly fine. But that's the problem with Meet Your Maker. Is it worth the grind right now? Well, let's jump into what exactly the gameplay loop is and meet your maker from the beginning. So when you first get into the game, you're introduced to a story that is pretty straightforward. The world is a wasteland and you're trying to save humanity by gathering a material known as Genmet for a creature called the Chimera, which looks like something out of the movie Aliens, which is really cool, not to mention just the general grittiness of the game is great. Anyways, you earn this gen mat material by either raiding other players' bases that they have created or by killing players who try to raid your base with your own traps and monsters placed within them. There are also various other materials you will also earn alongside this that are used for various of upgrades and items in your command center. These are bought from people known as advisors. Each advisor has a specialty they cover that range from weapons, equipment, and armor for the player to traps and monsters for the player to use in their own bases. Also, as you successfully raid bases and have players fail at raiding your base, your Chimera will level up and give you even more materials for each level. Then just about everything you buy can be upgraded to be even better or have different effects, like a trap that would normally only work once now works an infinite number of times until destroyed. Then before going into another player's level, you can activate different boosts with advisors that give different effects that can help out a player before they start a raid, like what kind of trap was placed most in that player's base. Then one last thing I want to mention about the command center is, there is a replay station where you can watch your past attempts on other players' bases, or look at how people did trying to raid your base, which is honestly one of my favorite things to do. Seeing people fail at trying to get through your monstrosity of a base is a super satisfying experience, but also key in seeing weak points in your design that can be approved upon, because like I said before, you get materials from players if they die trying to get through your base, which I should also mention, you can have up to 5 active bases going at once. These bases have a gen mat bar that once depleted, renders the base inactive, so it's really important to design one that is truly difficult for players to get through to maximize your profit. Also, your bases gain experience that allows you to prestige them, so you have even more capacity with them. Because you see, when you claim a build site, they have a max capacity that represents your build limit. So for example, if I place a monster down, it takes up 50 capacity, where a normal block used for floors or walls takes only one. So you can see why capacity is so important, but at the same time, it can be somewhat counterproductive. Depending on how many traps and the size of your base, you can get one of three rating levels for your base, normal, dangerous, and brutal. I've noticed in my 30 hours of playing that if I have a base rated in the brutal category, far less players will attempt it compared to a base I have in the normal category. Now this may change over time as players get better upgrades for their gear and weapons, but I can't help but think the rewards for completing a brutal base needs to be a little greater for the effort. But now I suppose I should talk about the rating experience from the perspective of the player. It's pretty straightforward. You can bring in any combo of any two weapons you own, a suit with up to three perks, and hardware that includes items like grenades. You then choose a base from one of the three categories of difficulty, then you're ready to hop in. Now I do want to throw out sometimes you will have outposts marked as champion outposts. If you complete these, you get bonus rewards. Also, you have social outposts or social rating where you can just, you know, go raid a friend's base or whatever. And, you know, you just do it for fun. There's no progression or anything like that. So that's also nice. Now, when you arrive on a player's map, you will always start on this catwalk with this machine in front of you that has a little four-legged creature known as the Harvester. If you follow this, it will lead you on the correct path to where the player's gen mat is inside their base. But most of the time, it's probably going to die, so you're usually on your own and figuring out how to move through a player's base. Not to mention, the little harvester isn't going to help you survive the endless traps you encounter throughout another player's base. 
that's up to you. And one of the most useful tools you have by default to do this is a grappling hook with infinite uses that not only pulls you to where you grapple, you can literally hang there and scope out a situation or avoid otherwise impossible to dodge traps. Then any trap and monster you run into can be destroyed or killed, which I highly recommend. You get bonus XP for it and it assures you will have a safe path for travel. Now if you die, which basically takes only one shot from anything, you spawn back at the beginning of the base. So no checkpoints here. You have to do these in one shot, which is completely fine since each level is a completely unique experience that you will only run into once. And the best part is that when you get past all the traps and grab the gen mat, new traps can spawn afterwards. So the experience leaving a player's base can be completely different than the experience going in. Then after you have successfully extracted, you can rate a player's base on one of four categories, or be a cheeky bastard and just not leave a rating at all. But now, what is the real point in Meet Your Maker outside of all of this? Well, I'm not really sure honestly, and that's why I said I'm not sure if I can recommend this game yet. The gameplay is simple but fun. The base building brings an endless amount of content for the players, but in terms of variety of unlocks from weapons to traps, there just isn't much going on here progression wise. Not to mention, you can play co-op which is great, but a lot of the bases built by people are instantly worthless since they are largely built with a single player experience in mind and not accounting for the fact that players are playing co-op and able to revive each other. There needs to be options or a playlist with co-op in mind so players who spend their resources claiming a base don't go to waste since they can't account for two players. Then I'm not sure what the point of having any kind of story really is since you really don't get nothing expanded upon while playing the game, but I do have hope there is already a roadmap for Meet Your Maker with a lot of new content on the way, so I'm sure the game will improve drastically over time. It just would be nice if there could have been a little more to the game at launch since it's such a cool concept that has huge upside and potential. Safe to say, it will be interesting to see where the game is at a year from now, let's say. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll talk to you whenever the next one is.